From planes to airports to features on oh my, today I'm once again looking at your PTF suggestions in the PTC Discord server and rate them on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm really excited for this one, so I'm Mr. Bolsman and let's get started with the first suggestion by Bemti with the F-117 Nighthawk. That's right, we're starting off spicy. Developed by Lockheed's highly secret development division at the time, Skunkworks, the F-117 is a stealth bomber for the United States Air Force. These bad boys were secretly built during the 80s and once revealed to the public, it played a key role in Operation Desert Storm in the Gulf War and other skirmishes in former day Yugoslavia and Iraq. Before being retired in 2008 to make way for the F-22 Raptor and move to training use only, it remains one of the most beloved aircraft in the Air Force's history and there's a good reason why. Like look at it, that design is so odd but very striking to the eye. With that triangular cockpit exterior design to that V-wing and tail, it most definitely checks the uniqueness box that I always like to reiterate. Factor in the colorways that could be added including the usual dark black but also the gray dragon and USA painted bottom ones, I think it's quite clear to what I'm gonna give for the suggestion. Perfecto. 10 out of 10. Endershow TY says they're modeled the legendary Greater Rockford International Airport with possibly a second terminal, bigger hangars, and a private jet area. Whoa. Some massive changes, so let's go ahead and talk about it. Though Greater Rockford did receive some overhauls a few years ago, including the rebuild of the runway layout, along with the removal of a fire safety zone with the cargo terminal, the design has been, for a better word, a custom within the community, and that comes with mixed thoughts. One good thing to take away from this is those large hangars, because this ain't gonna cut it for wide bodies, and how much of these planes even come in? and come out of here, yeah, I would agree with that. The private terminal idea is also something I would approve. When we have aircraft like the Learjet and Vision Jet and maybe some others soon, we can see private jet role plays happen and opens opportunity on that front. We've never seen that in PTFS before and adding it to GR is a good start. But I don't know how necessary to feel about the second terminal. I would argue that's a little too excessive and unless you're making massive changes to the map, where are you gonna put it? Are you gonna change the spawn area with this new terminal? This space over here? Many questions. While I do agree that GR should get some kind of facelift, it should Shouldn't be a huge opal that radically changes what GR is embedded in players' minds. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 6 out of 10 as it's very controversial, but I'm not too opposed to it. Next up is Zaf. Fofi? Man, I butchered that, but make it call size customizable with a checker for banned exceptions and not already used in server. Now, I can't complain about custom call signs. The call signs in game are, um, questionable at best, and I think giving players the freedom to alter their experience with this addition is something I would have support. Integration, however, is a key problem. Now, assuming you're already gonna use the pre-built Roblox moderation system, it could work, but you would have to take it for granted. There'll be some times where people may abuse this feature, whether it is for inappropriate names or recreating crashes that I think y'all can imagine. It will happen and not everything will be filtered out. It's such a blur to me that I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 5 out of 10. On paper, this would be an amazing app, but look ahead, you get some very much looming problems. Naval Tom Flory suggested adding the E2 Hawkeye with the state-of-the-art radar system and would be really cool for naval roleplays. Created by Northrop Grumman, the US Navy uses the E2 for numerous reasons, including for surveillance, command capabilities, and airborne early warnings. From its turboprop design, slim body, ancient four drill tails, and of course, that massive radar system on top, it definitely screams unique. Now, if added to PTFS, the Super Fudge could be a great host to so many features. You could use the same radar system we have in the ATC Towers and have them on the E2, making use of its command capabilities. Maybe to further sweeten the ATC Game Pass, maybe add the E2 to it to further fit this radar use feature. And because it was used for the Navy, you could add the catapult system and arresting wire hooks for this plane, making it the fourth plane to have this feature and the first non fighter jet to be able to do this. Folks, it's a 9 out of 10 for me. No question to ask. Let's make it happen, Orange. Next one comes from Crosswalk334 with him wanting to add Scott Air Force Base slash St. Louis Mid-America. Now, it was said in the suggestion that it should be added for the lack of military bases and the two airports are actually on one property, creating some uniqueness and more opportunity. And I agree. Scott Air Force Base has a long-standing history. Opened in August in 1917, it played an important role during World War II, vital in communication. Scott Field was used to train radio operators for the war effort and, let me say, it was home to the best damn radio radio operators in the world. In the present day, it is now home to the Air Force, the Illinois Air National Guard, U.S. Army, and the Department of Defense, and plays a crucial role for the military as one of the mainland USA's crucial military installments. The commercial side of the airport, St. Louis Mid-America Airport, has some things going for it though. It has some cargo facilities on property and is home to one airline, American low-cost carrier Allegiant. Again, I love this suggestion. I think that dual-use concept is a really cool idea and gives BTF a cool concept to play around with. Mid-America isn't that big and by itself would be a quite a bland suggestion. But if you tack on Scott AFB, you have yourself a 2 for 1 combination, which I definitely approve of. This would be a 10 out of 10, but as Don Prokos said it was the gateway to nowhere, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. 
Still love it though. Gas says to add formation mode to PTFS. How he envisioned it, it would have a leader which can invite people to the formation. When enabled, other aircraft will follow the same thing as what the leader is doing, like turns and loops. It's basically the envisioning of Simon Says. I think this is a good suggestion on paper, but here's the problem that the suggestion fails to realize. Lag. What if a person in a part of the formation has a lower FPS than the others? Then, you see, you're gonna run into an issue where the formation wouldn't even look like one at that point. The synchronization part, in my opinion, can't possibly work. However, if you were to find some way around it for whatever reason, this would be an amazing, excellent suggestion. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 5 out of 10 to balance out the rating. Speaking of formations, we got another related one right here by Rexus 2 by adding smoke to the extra 300s as a game pass. With display teams like the Flying Bills, a huge part of their performances is the use of smoke. And honestly, why not? Smoke is already in the game on all other display teams, the Red Arrows, Blue Angels, and Thunderbirds. Also, the extra 300s would be the first non-military fighter plane to have a display team. Just saying, adding something already in the game to another plane doesn't seem like a hard add whatsoever. I do disagree, however, with it being a game pass. The extra 300 is already free, and with the other display teams already having a cash payment, I would argue it should be zero. I just feel the extra 300 display should be at least available to the general public because of the proponents of the other teams in the game. So you're welcome. 8 out of 10. The Airbus A321 is up next, an MSFS PTFS flyer, that's a mouthful, argues that it would be an amazing addition to PTFS. And look, I think the A321 would be a solid addition to the PTFS commercial catalog. But um, no variants fellas, it's automatically removed it from consideration. And even if we were to have variants in the game, it's basically a larger A320 because it's meant to be. It isn't even remotely unique enough to justify being added because at this point, any new aircraft must have some kind of distinct reason why it was built. Now, I know I'm gonna get whacked for this rating, but if y'all been listening to me for whatever I just said, at least you see where I'm coming from. It's a 2 out of 10. After that harsh rating, let's go ahead and get back in track with the one of the most highly suggested features to the game. Shark wants to see free cam added to PTFS Mobile. Yes, yes, yes. At the moment, PTFS Mobile players who own the ACC Game Pass, um, don't have access to free cam whatsoever compared to their desktop counterparts. This is huge because a big proponent of buying the pass in the first place is access to the free movement camera. And to be honest, it is way more important than the use of the ATC tower. By adding in free cam, this automatically gives mobile players their full money's worth and may incentivize more people to even buy it. Besides, it gives more creative freedom in video making for these players, which is of course a positive. I mean, we can all agree it'll work better than the binoculars tool. Now, I'm not sure how the GUI would actually work. The whole point of free cam is to have no GUI intruding in the video, which for mobile to even work, you have to add anyway. But if Sam, the coder PTFS, can get it done, the pros beat out the cons. 10 out of 10 suggestion, and it's definitely wanted. Charlie once suggested the devs to add Scottsdale Airport to the game. His proposal includes the flight training area for pilots and first officers, just like the training center, along with a private jet terminal. It's an interesting idea, so obviously I had to look into it. SCF is a general aviation airport in Scottsdale, Arizona, which has some stuff going from it. Whether it's the quiet, unique, modern design of the terminal, or a very densely populated scenery surrounding the airport, it would definitely differ from other similar counterparts like South Batona and Hensdridge. I just don't know if what it brings to the table makes it the best airport option to add to the game. As stated earlier, the private FBO for private jets makes it a very attractive incentive and would bring a new concept to PTFS. The training part may be though, um, very obsolete because the training center, which already lost is perfect for training only, and that doesn't really help the case for Scottsdale either. With how limited PTFS has for new airports on islands, it's unlikely it would be the main airport for this expansion. However, I would be more positive if it was added as the second smaller airport to a more heavy hitter. It's a 5 out of 10 for me. We move on to Nakia with the addition of the Pilatus PC-6 as another tail dragger and light aircraft. The Pilatus PC-6 was first built in 1959 as a utility aircraft for general aviation use. With 604 built over a span of 6 decades, it's no question the PC-6 has been a mainstay within the GI community. It was also used in the military, especially for the Austrian Air Force for surveillance, firefighting, and support, along with it being even used for skydiving. It is also still approved, meaning it can take off and land on short runways, and its rock performance makes it perfect to land wherever, whenever, whether it's a glacier which the PC-6 holds the world record for highest landed by a fixed wing aircraft to save it to insane barbs. It's a definition of a small mighty warrior. However, I do think for the most of the community, it's boring. GA superfans will love this plane and I certainly would like it as well. I just think the PC-6 may not be the most exciting aircraft update in the world to most players. I'll go ahead and give it a 5 out of 10. Banner Marker 1789 suggested that Lihu Airport should be added to the game with its mid-sized design and two runways. The Lihu Airport is on the island of Lihu in the Hawaiian archipelago and its design to me would be stunning in PTFS. The terminal is mostly open air leading to a special interior as design that gives you the spirit of Hawaii. When checking in, you are exposed to the wine open element, which definitely checks the boxes of uniqueness. The ground layout is also different. 
different. Though with two runways, it is in parallel like GR, intersect like Perf, and would actually compare to Tokyo, but without the bridge. For the ATC Tower, it reminds me more of Barra or Luka or St. Bars, but serving such as a large airport like Lihu separates itself from a regular international airport. Its natural beauty is also a plus, with approaches over the pristine Pacific Ocean and on land, large mounds of mountains in the background. Even the fencing contributes as well. Something about this screams hometown, and Lihu embraces it. And I do believe it would be a fun project Orin would like to tackle if adding a new airport, because of all these things that make LAH very special. Whether it's a new secondary airport like Mela or a main highlight up an island, either way, this airport is a home run and a 10 out of 10 for me. This suggestion comes from developer Dame Programmer with the big ol' Lockheed C5 Galaxy. And boy, we gotta talk about it, cause look at that approve to disapprove ratio. Since 1969, from Vietnam to Yugoslavia to Afghanistan to anywhere the US has been, the C5 has been an integral part for these logistics of these campaigns. This is because of how much space that large fuselage can hold, both for cargo and military personnel movement. Its large overhead wings power this huge plane with its four engines mounted under them. At the rear end, the huge detail and how much landing gear wheels are installed at the bottom of the plane are both indications of how massive it was. Heck, if we get openable cargo doors beneath the nose, which also has been a requested feature for the 747 Cargo, Dreamlift, and Beluga, it makes the C5 more lucrative. I mean, I told you how unique it is, and there's actually no plane currently in PTFS that serves this military use, large super cargo transport. The C-130 is small and doesn't remotely share many similarities, so the C-5 is in a league in its own. I would love to see it added to the game, because I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. And our final submission comes from Fox BG, with the Wayne Fan FMX4 Facet Mobile. And to be honest, I'm not even sure if it's real. A few moments later. Wow. It's actually real. So the FMX-4 is a home-built aircraft by a former Northlock Grumman engineer who designed such a very weird fuselage. The entire aircraft acts like a wing with two wing tips on either end of the plane. And um, I'm not gonna lie, it looks like a paper airplane. Here's me trying to copy a tutorial to make a somewhat similar plane. I'm not sure why I added this video, but hey, anything for retention. But unfortunately, in 1995, the plane suffered an engine failure, which when landed resulted in the damage of the plane, though no injuries were occurred. Even though it was slightly repaired, it never took the skies again. So, I guess we never learned from the lesson of Derek's creation. Yep, Derek definitely kind of stray. <laughs> Maybe as a secret aircraft, sure, maybe would be cool, but there's no blueprint which Orange can base off of, which makes it very, very unlikely to be added to PTFS. 1 out of 10. So yeah, fellas, we went through tons of PTF suggestions. Let me know in the comments below what was your favorite, but I'm done. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm Mr. Wolfman, and as always, take flight. See ya!